Our first lesson, our first reading for this 12th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, beginning at verse 3. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the word of our Lord. The second lesson comes from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, chapter 4, beginning at verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is recorded for us in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 41. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and mercy and peace belong to you from God our Heavenly Father through his Son and our Savior who calls himself the bread of life come down from heaven to give life for the world. This is the gospel lesson for this for this morning, John chapter 6, verses 41 through 51. It's a continuation from the same chapter 6 of John's Gospel that we've been taking a look at for the past four weeks. And again, we'll focus on that bread of life that is Jesus. Dear brothers and dear sisters, in Christ Jesus, the bread of life. Have you heard the latest from Panera Bread? You know, that chain that's throughout the country. I was introduced to it about 15, 16, 17 years ago by my wife, who used to like to go there, especially after work or during work. Sometimes they would send out for Panera bread. It's a, it's a store that is famous for its bread, its bakery. You can get sandwiches there on, on specialty kinds of breads. It's got some nice soups. You can get bagels, all kinds of things that you would typically find in a, in a bakery. Anyways, in an attempt to re-engage its customers or re-energize its customers last week or the week before, I can't remember where or when I heard it, but they're coming out with a brand new food item on the menu. It's called the Double Bread Bowl. If you've ever been to Panera's, you might have seen the bread bowl, which is basically a, a sourdough loaf of bread, kind of narrow and long, and then they scoop some bread out of it, and then they replace it with a cup of soup. So you can have the, the bread, 
and have your soup inside the bread. I, I guess basically because a lot of people like to dip their bread in their soup sometimes. But now they're going all out and they're going with a double bread bowl. So you've got a, a, a doubly big sourdough loaf of bread and you've got two holes scooped out of that bread and you can fill it with a cup of potato cream of potato or a cup of broccoli and cheese or if you want you can do a, a cup of macaroni and cheese that's the double bread bowl it's not officially on the menu yet <clears throat> they're testing it in Philadelphia but from the early reviews it sounds like it's popular enough that it will probably make a permanent place on the Panera menu across the country so just wait and you might just see the double bread bowl in a Panera Panera's near you if you're watching your diet or if your doctor is telling you to watch your carbs I would say run away from the double bread bowl because if you're talking those rich soups combined with a double bread bowl, you're talking a, a whole lot of carbs and a whole lot of things, starches, that, that some doctors will say, you know what, you can't have too much of those things if you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to stay at the weight that you are right now. But it's really good. If you've ever been there, if you've ever been to Panera's and had the bread bowl, delicious bread mixed with soup how can you go wrong with that I could live on Panera's I could live on the bread even a, a baguette from Panera's even though we don't go there nowadays because it's gotten a whole lot more expensive but it's just delicious Jesus talks about a bread he says that you have to live on a bread that you can't go without He's not talking about the bread that he gave to his followers previous to his teaching when he fed the 5,000 on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. He's talking not about Panera's type bread that comes out of a bakery. He's talking about the bread of life that he calls himself. And he says, I've come down from heaven to give life for the world. Eat this bread and you will live. Not just for this life, but you will live forever. Jesus encourages us again in these words from St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, to eat a diet of the bread of life. Not just here and there, but regularly, faithfully, feed on the bread of life, God's house, Jesus, which comes down from heaven, which gives eternal life to all who eat it. John 6 kind of marks a turning point in Jesus' ministry. Before this, he had been super popular everywhere Jesus went. People were sure to follow because of his miracles, because of his teaching. But now John chapter 6 comes and people start to fall away from him. Why was that? Because he start, started talking the way that he did last gospel lesson, last week's gospel lesson. And he, he, he talked about himself being the bread of life that came down from heaven. But now the tide became, begins to turn against him because people knew him. In, in our text, it tells us the people started to grumble against him, and he, know, he knew what the grumbling was all about. It was because they didn't believe who he said that he truly was. John tells us why in the beginning of our text. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Again, last week we heard Jesus say, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And Jesus made it abundantly clear that he was not talking about bread or anybody else, but he was talking and referring to himself. And that was really hard for the people to digest. Because they knew Jesus' father, and they knew his mother, and they knew where he was from. He was from Nazareth. He was not from heaven. His father was Joseph, at least stepfather was Joseph, not God, and he did not come from God in heaven. So how can this Jesus speak as if he is God, come down from heaven to give life to the world? You know, the people evidently did not know Jesus very well. And they kind of undersold him. Not only did they undersell him, but they, they kind of underestimated Jesus. Because they were concerned about the same things that you and I are concerned about very often in our lives. Life. Life. 
getting through this life. Eating day to day, protection, a roof over our heads, that's what we are concerned about very often. We're concerned about how am I going to get from this day to the next day and to the next week and to next year eventually. If Jesus gives us what we need for today and to get to tomorrow, I'm happy with him. If Jesus gives me protection from illness or disease, I am happy with Jesus. If Jesus gives me what I love in this life, then I'm happy with him. If he gives me a job that pays me what I want in this life, I am happy with Jesus. As long as Jesus overlooks the sin that I am committing, because there's extenuating circumstances, you know, if he overlooks the sin, then I am happy with Jesus. If Jesus gives me relief from a particular storm that comes in my life, I'm happy for him. We undersell Jesus by thinking that he only is there to deal with our daily pressing problems. And that he's really here to be the bread of life. So that when you feed on him, when you believe in him and what he says in his word, we have eternal life in heaven. Jesus goes on and he reminds them of a miracle from their ancestors' past. He goes back to the 40 years of wandering in the, Israel, in the Israelite desert. He says, do you remember when your forefathers were in the desert and they got extremely hungry and then God gave them manna from heaven for them to eat? I've got a better miracle for you. It's not something that you can eat, not something that you pick off the ground. It's something that you eat spiritually. It's faith. Believe in Jesus and you have heaven. That's the better miracle. The true God who came down from heaven and became into this world for a purpose, came into this world for a purpose. That was to forgive my sins and the sins of the world, to give life to the world through that forgiveness. And Jesus says it. I am the bread of life. Here is the bread that came down from heaven, which a man may eat of and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Not just for 60, 70, 80, 90 years on this earth. He will live forever, but only if you are feeding on the bread of life. No other diet works to get to heaven. Only if you have Jesus as the diet that you are centered on. If you want to live forever in heaven, this is the bread that you have to be eating. In my Bible, in my study Bible, <clears throat> my old Bible that I got years and years ago, I have a comment across from this passage in John chapter 6. It says, refer to my dogmatics three ring binder that a, it was a class in the seminary that kind of lists all the main teachings of the Bible and then it lists all kinds of passages that are the proof passages for each of those teachings and 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 when we got to John chapter 6 verse 51 it cross referenced me to one of the my dogmatics binders and in I went back to that and in that particular dogmatics binder it talked about the life of the pelican or the legend of the pelican Evidently, back in the Middle Ages, the Christians mistakenly thought that the pelican was the most kind, loving, caring, compassionate of all of God's creatures. Why? Because you know what it looks like? It's got that big, huge, funny-looking beak with the pointed end. And very often, when the pelican it's feeding, it's, is feeding its young, it looks as if it is gouging its own flesh out and then giving it to the pelicans to eat, just because of the way that it looks when you look at it sometimes. And so the early Christians back in the Middle Ages, they said, you know, this is kind of the way that Jesus is. And it talks about what Jesus does in John chapter 6, verse 51. I, this, is my blood, this is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So, so they took that passage and they combined it with all that they thought that the pelican did and then they used the pelican as one of the earliest Christian symbols for Jesus. You find it in stained glass windows back in Europe. You find it on altar work, carved work in Europe. The pelican, it's a funny thing to see in church in a stained glass window, but if you understand the history behind it, you know exactly why they used it. Because they thought that it was a perfect symbol for Jesus who gave his own flesh 
for the sins of the world. You know, it's got a whole lot of good comparisons, doesn't it? If, if, if the pelican really did what they thought that it did, give its flesh for the life of the world, that's exactly what Jesus did. His flesh was torn open by spears and nails, and it was offered on the sacrifice of the cross for the sins of the world, that anyone who believes in Jesus might live forever. It, it's a nice story, nice legend, nice myth, but it's only just that. It's only a legend, and it's only a myth. There has never, ever been a recorded incident in history where a pelican has actually plunged its sharp beak into its flesh and then offered that flesh to its young when it doesn't have any other food for its young to eat. But Jesus is no legend, and Jesus is no myth, and Jesus is not some made-up person that some people accuse him of being to give life for Christians who need him. The, the bottom line in these verses, John chapter 6, and we're finally coming to the end of this bread of life discourse, where Jesus talks about physical bread, and then he moves beautifully into the fact that he is a spiritual bread, bread for the world, that bled and died on the cross that we might live. The bottom line is that we need a steady diet of God's word. Be in God's house regularly. If you want to live forever, you need to be hearing and feeding on the bread of life that is Jesus. Not only is it Jesus, but it's God's word, which tells us everything that we need to know about the bread of life. You know, it, it might not be always entertaining. It might not always be exciting, this word of God that we base our lives on, that we listen to on a regular basis. It might even be boring to us sometimes. No matter what, however, it's what we need. A exciting, boring sometimes, it doesn't really matter any of those things. But the bread of life that we find in God's word, in God's house, is life-giving. Again, not for this life, but for the life that we're looking for in the next life in heaven. It gives us forgiveness of sins. It gives us eternal life. And so Jesus' encouragement throughout John chapter 6 and throughout his word, keep on feeding, feasting on the bread of life. That is Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond our understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.